In the heart of many Europeans, Europe was a virtuous idea that sought to bring a continent together in peace and harmony. But the free marketers have put an end to that. Where once we aspired to the ideals of peace, cooperation, sharing and the real economy, we now have competition, confiscation and finance. Europe has become a laboratory for true economic experiments. Our dream is now a nightmare, in which we repeat the mantra of Margaret Thatcher ad infinitum, there is no alternative. Yet, in every country, there are alternative political and social forces, communists, socialists, reds and greens, who refuse to accept this diktat. These forces have come together to create the party of the European left. Their vision is to set out an alternative to the current system under the banner of an alliance against austerity. What is the EL's manifesto? Firstly, we want to free Europe's people from the clutches of public debt. Our people paid 13 trillion euros to bail out the banks and shouldered a mountain of debt that is stifling any chance of recovery. Debt interest is the largest expenditure item for many countries. Let's impose a new, exceptional levy on the banks and others who profited from the crisis. And let's restructure our debt. Secondly, we call for an end to austerity, the so-called golden rule of budgetary balance. Those things that the European Union has encouraged governments to privatize and turn into a commodity, health, transport, energy, telecommunications, should be considered in terms of the common good and public service. Yet public expenditure and investment in things such as infrastructure can help to meet local needs and give economies a much needed boost. We must therefore change course. Let's start by challenging the claim that budgetary balance is the be all and end all. Let's introduce a vast European spending program in which we invest in our future. Let's target this money at key growth driving sectors such as digital and environmental technologies and let's focus our investment on the worst hit regions of our continent in a spirit of fairness and equality. Thirdly, we want to put an end to the erosion of basic rights and protections for Europe's citizens and workers. More competition for jobs and social dumping between people leads to misery and division and opens the door to the far right. The answer is to improve and harmonize social protection and rights. On maternity leave, for example, let's gradually introduce more legal safety nets for women. On workers' rights, let's increase everyone's basic pay so that nobody receives less than the very highest minimum wage on our continent. This is surely the best way to stamp out fierce competition between employees. Fourthly, and finally, we aim to tackle the great taboo, the financial system and the euro. Let's do away with the financial speculation that is corroding our societies and our economies. Let's start by introducing a new levy on financial transactions and establishing genuinely effective policies to stamp out fraud and tax avoidance. Rather than blindly accepting the TTIP and rolling out the red carpet to banks and multinationals, let's keep them under control. The euro is the cornerstone of Europe's monetary policy, but instead of serving the interests of vast, privately owned financial institutions, the European Central Bank should act as a genuine investment bank. Instead of helping a member state in its hour of need, it cut off liquidity to Greece. It should be a force for growth, not oppression. We believe that the ECB should have the power to lend directly to states. We call for an overhaul of the institution's statutes to ensure that its funds are channeled into the real economy and not into the hands of speculators. Europe is at a crossroads. To continue pursuing policies that lead to recession would be an unmitigated disaster, adding more fuel to the fire of the far right. But there is an alternative. That alternative is the EL. For more information, visit our website at european-left.org.